There are a few settings that I see beginners leave enabled in Final Cut Pro that is costing them hundreds if not thousands of gigabytes of storage. Now there are specific reasons why you'd want to leave these settings enabled, but hopefully by the end of this video you're going to have a better understanding of what those settings do and get back a tremendous amount of storage space on your computer. So the first option we can find is in the import window. So we'll go up to the top left and select import. You can also achieve that with command I. Now if we go over to the right side, you'll see under files, there is copy to library and leave files in place. I personally recommend that you select leave files in place. And the reason for this is because when you select copy to library, any graphic song file, video file, anything you bring into your library is going to get copied there. Now this can be seen as an advantage because if you happen to need to move this library off to a different hard drive, or if you happen to want to upload it to something like Google Drive or Dropbox, then all your files are going to be self-contained. The downside being everything is going to duplicate in size. Not to mention, if I were to jump into a different library and find a video file I wanted and bring it back back over into this other project, your video files are also going to get duplicated. So if you're working with say an hour long interview clip, that hour long interview clip has just been duplicated into your new project and it's just made things way more massive. It's for that reason that I suggest you select leave files in place. With this in mind, it is going to be very important that you know exactly where your data is because if you don't, you might accidentally move your project files somewhere else. Final Cut Pro is not going to know where they are and you'll need to relink them or if you happen to delete them, they're gone forever. Now, if you do select leave files in place, it's going to be very, very important that you know exactly where your data is. So personally, this is how I have my folder structure set up. In my movies folder, I have one labeled projects and inside of that projects folder, I have another folder. We'll just call this T0 default and I label it T as in tutorial. Now this is going to be my default folder that I copy all of my projects from. In here, we're gonna add a footage folder. We're going to add music folder. We're gonna add a sound effects folder. We can add a graphics folder and we could even add a library folder. So we have all my folders in place and before I create the next project, I would go into my T0 default and we'll just push option, click and drag to duplicate it. I would rename this to be T1 and just call it whatever the project is, how to subscribe. Now this folder has that structure. I can go ahead and import all my footage off of my SD card into this footage folder. So we can go in here, find the footage I wanna copy over. I'll just push command C and then drop it into my footage folder here. So once I have all my folders in place, now it's time to go to Final Cut Pro. We'll just go ahead and locate that. It was on my desktop here and we'll just go to the projects folder. It's in the how to subscribe folder and we can import our footage. And we could actually just import everything and that is going to actually carry those keywords into Final Cut Pro. We can just push import all. It's important that you have this file structure so you know exactly where your data is. That way you don't accidentally misplace it because the benefit of copying your files to the library is that you always know they're gonna be self-contained within that library. However, that comes at the expense of a lot of storage space. If you don't want to bother building out your folder structure like this, I highly recommend you go check out my friend Matthew O'Brien. I'm going to link that down below. He has a great finder template that you can pick up. This video is obviously not sponsored. I am just good friends with Matthew and I really appreciate the hard work he put into his template. Also, when it comes to importing in Final Cut Pro, if you're importing off of an SD card, it should be noted that you cannot select leave files in place. You're always going to have to copy it to the library regardless of your options beforehand. However, this does have some of the benefits of copying to the library. For example, all your footage is going to be with that library. And then if you happen to need to pull some footage from this project and push it into another project, that project is going to actually leave files in place. If you decide down the road that you actually do want to copy all of your media into the library, all you need to do is select your library, go to the right side and find this consolidate button. You can click that and it's going to bring up this dialog window. You can select original 
digital media, optimized media, or proxy media. And in fact, if you wanna create a project that's just proxy media for editing on the road, maybe you don't have a computer that has that much storage or something like that, you can actually just disable these two other options and then change your media destination, and then you can edit off that project. Which brings me into the next mistake I see beginners making that could be costing them hundreds, if not thousands of gigabytes of space. Back in our import window, if we scroll further down, you'll see these transcode options. And by default, these are enabled. Create optimized media and create proxy media. Optimized media and proxy media are really fantastic at boosting performance in your computer. But honestly, Final Cut Pro is so well optimized that a lot of the time you don't need to optimize your media. I strongly recommend that you disable these two options. Then you start playing around in Final Cut Pro and you see how smooth your footage is working. If you're having a hard time with your footage, then at any time in your project, you can right click that footage, select transcode media, and in here you can create an optimized version or proxy media. Now the specific file I'm already working with has been optimized for Final Cut Pro, so I can't do that now. But I could create some proxy media and I could change it over to H.264. We could go down to 12.5% of the original scale, so you can get really small. The benefit of optimized media, it is the same quality as your original media. It's going to retain all the same bit depth data, it's going to retain all the same resolution data, all of that. Proxy media can vastly boost the performance of your computer at the cost of losing resolution and some bit depth. Final Cut Pro shouldn't be automatically creating that optimized media. You should be making that decision when you actually need it and it's going to save you so much storage space in the long run. Now one last quick note, to use your proxy media, you're gonna need to go up to view and select proxy preferred or proxy only. I usually prefer proxy preferred because that means you don't need to set everything over to a proxy video. However, with that in mind, you're gonna need to go back up to view and select optimize original when you want to export your video. So the very last setting that I would consider changing if you wanna save yourself a lot of storage space is going up to Final Cut Pro, selecting preferences, finding playback and disabling background render. Background render is again another performance enhancing thing, but a lot of the time you don't even need to render in Final Cut Pro because it's just so well optimized, especially if you're on Apple Silicon. I strongly recommend you go ahead and disable background render, and then if there's a time where you need to render out something, you can select a clip and push Control R. This will force Final Cut Pro to render that segment so you can play it back if you have a lot of graphics and your playback is really starting to slow down. So hopefully by changing these three things in Final Cut Pro, you are going to save yourself so much storage space. And when you do need to make the decisions where you use these features, you're going to know exactly what they're doing and why your library might be ballooning in size. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If this video was helpful, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.